Numbers chapter 36 The family heads of the clan of Gilead, son of Machir, the son of Manasseh, who were from the clans of the descendants of Joseph, came and spoke before Moses and the leaders, the heads of the Israelite families. They said, When the Lord commanded my Lord to give the land as an inheritance to the Israelites by lot, he ordered you to give the inheritance of our brother Zelophehad to his daughters. Now suppose they marry men from other Israelite tribes, then their inheritance will be taken from our ancestral inheritance and added to that of the tribe they marry into. And so part of the inheritance allotted to us will be taken away. When the year of Jubilee for the Israelites comes, their inheritance will be added to that of the tribe into which they marry, and their property will be taken from the tribal inheritance of our ancestors. Then at the Lord's command, Moses gave this order to the Israelites. What the tribe of the descendants of Joseph is saying is right. This is what the Lord commands for Zelophehad's daughters. They may marry anyone they please, as long as they marry within their father's tribal clan. No inheritance in Israel is to pass from one tribe to another, for every Israelite shall keep the tribal inheritance of their ancestors. Every daughter who inherits the land in any Israelite tribe must marry someone in her father's tribal clan, so that every Israelite will possess the inheritance of their ancestors. No inheritance may pass from one tribe to another, for each Israelite tribe is to keep the land it inherits. So Zelophehad's daughters did as the Lord commanded Moses. Zelophehad's daughters, Mala, Teza, Hogla, Milka, and Noah, married their cousins on their father's side. They married within the clans of the descendants of Manasseh, son of Joseph, and their inheritance remained in their father's tribe and clan. These are the commands and regulations the Lord gave through Moses to the Israelites on the plains of Moab by the Jordan opposite Jericho. The Book of Deuteronomy Deuteronomy chapter 1 These are the words Moses spoke to all Israel in the wilderness east of the Jordan, that is, in the Arabah opposite Saf, between Peran and Tophel Laban, Haziroth and Dizabad. It takes eleven days to go from Horeb to Kadesh Barnea by the Mount Seo road. In the fortieth year, on the first day of the eleventh month, Moses proclaimed to the Israelites all that the Lord had commanded him concerning them. This was after he had defeated Sihon, king of the Amorites, who reigned at Hezbon, and at Edrei had defeated Og, king of Bashan, who reigned in Ashtaroth. East of the Jordan in the territory of Moab, Moses began to expound this law, saying, The Lord our God said to us at Horeb, You have stayed long enough at this mountain. Break camp and advance into the hill country of the Amorites. Go to all the neighboring peoples in the Arabah, in the mountains, in the western foothills, in the Negev and along the coast, to the land of the Canaanites and to Lebanon, as far as the great river, the Euphrates. See, I have given you this land. Go in and take possession of the land that the Lord swore he would give to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and to their descendants after them. At that time I said to you, You are too heavy a burden for me to carry alone. The Lord your God has increased your numbers, so that today you are as numerous as the stars in the sky. May the Lord, the God of your ancestors, increase you a thousand times and bless you as he has promised. But how can I bear your problems and your burdens and your disputes all by myself? Choose some wise, understanding, and respected men from each of your tribes, and I will set them over you. You answered me, what you propose to do is good. So I took the leading men of your tribes, wise and respected men, and appointed them to have authority over you, as commanders of thousands, of hundreds, of fifties, and of tens, and as tribal officials. And I charged your judges at that time, 
Hear the disputes between your people and judge fairly, whether the case is between two Israelites or between an Israelite and a foreigner residing among you. Do not show partiality in judging. Hear both small and great alike. Do not be afraid of anyone, for judgment belongs to God. Bring me any case too hard for you, and I will hear it. And at that time I told you everything you were to do. Then, as the Lord our God commanded us, we set out from Horeb and went towards the hill country of the Amorites, through all that vast and dreadful wilderness that you have seen. And so we reached Kadesh Barnea. Then I said to you, You have reached the hill country of the Amorites, which the Lord our God is giving us. See, the Lord your God has given you the land. Go up and take possession of it, as the Lord, the God of your ancestors, told you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Then all of you came to me and said, Let us send men ahead to spy out the land for us and bring back a report about the route we are to take and the towns we will come to. The idea seemed good to me. So I selected twelve of you, one man from each tribe. They left and went up into the hill country and came to the valley of Eshkol and explored it. Taking with them some of the fruit of the land, they brought it down to us and reported, It is a good land that the Lord our God is giving us. But you were unwilling to go up. You rebelled against the command of the Lord your God. You grumbled in your tents and said, The Lord hates us. So he brought us out of Egypt to deliver us into the hands of the Amorites to destroy us. Where can we go? Our brothers have made our hearts melt in fear. They say, The people are stronger and taller than we are. The cities are large, with walls up to the sky. We even saw the Anakites there. Then I said to you, Do not be terrified. Do not be afraid of them. The Lord your God who is going before you will fight for you as he did for you in Egypt before your very eyes and in the wilderness. There you saw how the Lord your God carried you as a father carries his son all the way you went until you reached this place. In spite of this, you did not trust in the Lord your God who went ahead of you on your journey, in fire by night and in a cloud by day, to search out places for you to camp and to show you the way you should go. When the Lord heard what you said, he was angry and solemnly swore, No one from this evil generation shall see the good land I swore to give your ancestors, except Caleb, son of Jephune. He will see it and I will give him and his descendants the land he set his feet on, because he followed the Lord wholeheartedly. Because of you the Lord became angry with me also, and said, You shall not enter it either, but your assistant Joshua, son of Nun, will enter it. Encourage him, because he will lead Israel to inherit it, and the little ones that you said would be taken captive, your children who do not yet know good from bad, they will enter the land. I will give it to them, and they will take possession of it. But as for you, turn round and set out towards the desert along the route to the Red Sea. Then you replied, We have sinned against the Lord. We will go up and fight as the Lord our God commanded us. So every one of you put on his weapons, thinking it easy to go up into the hill country. But the Lord said to me, Tell them, do not go up and fight, because I will not be with you. You will be defeated by your enemies. So I told you, but you would not listen. You rebelled against the Lord's command, and in your arrogance you marched up into the hill country. The Amorites who lived in those hills came out against you. They chased you like a swarm of bees and beat you down from Seir all the way to Hormah. You came back and wept before the Lord, but he paid no attention to your weeping and turned a deaf ear to you. And so you stayed in Kadesh many days, all the time you spent there. Deuteronomy chapter 2 
Then we turned back and set out towards the wilderness along the route to the Red Sea, as the Lord had directed me. For a long time we made our way around the hill country of Seir. Then the Lord said to me, You have made your way around this hill country long enough. Now turn north. Give the people these orders. You are about to pass through the territory of your relatives, the descendants of Esau, who live in Seir. They will be afraid of you, but be very careful. Do not provoke them to war, for I will not give you any of their land, not even enough to put your foot on. I have given Esau the hill country of Seir as his own. You are to pay them in silver for the food you eat and the water you drink. The Lord your God has blessed you in all the work of your hands. He has watched over your journey through this vast wilderness. These forty years the Lord your God has been with you, and you have not lacked anything. So we went on past our relatives, the descendants of Esau who live in Seir. We turned from the Araba road, which comes up from Elath and Ezion Sheba, and travelled along the desert road of Moab. Then the Lord said to me, Do not harass the Moabites or provoke them to war, for I will not give you any part of their land. I have given Ah to the descendants of Lot as a possession. The Emites used to live there, a people strong and numerous and as tall as the Anakites. Like the Anakites, they too were considered Rephaites, but the Moabites called them Emites. Horites used to live in Seir, but the descendants of Esau drove them out. They destroyed the Horites from before them and settled in their place, just as Israel did in the land the Lord gave them as their possession. And the Lord said, Now get up and cross the Zered Valley. So we crossed the valley. Thirty-eight years passed from the time we left Kadesh Barnea until we crossed the Zered Valley. By then, that entire generation of fighting men had perished from the camp as the Lord had sworn to them. The Lord's hand was against them until he had completely eliminated them from the camp. Now when the last of these fighting men among the people had died, the Lord said to me, Today you are to pass by the region of Moab at Ar. When you come to the Ammonites, do not harass them or provoke them to war, for I will not give you possession of any land belonging to the Ammonites. I have given it as a possession to the descendants of Lot. That too was considered a land of the Rephaites, who used to live there. But the Ammonites called them Zamzamites. They were a people strong and numerous, and as tall as the Anakites. The Lord destroyed them from before the Ammonites, who drove them out and settled in their place. The Lord had done the same for the descendants of Esau, who lived in Seir, when he destroyed the Horites from before them. They drove them out and have lived in their place to this day. And as for the Avites, who live in the villages as far as Gaza, the Kaphtorites coming out from Kaphtor destroyed them and settled in their place. Set out now and cross the Arnon Gorge. See, I have given into your hand Sihon the Amorite, king of Heshbon, and his country. Begin to take possession of it and engage him in battle. This very day, I will begin to put the terror and fear of you on all the nations under heaven. They will hear reports of you, and will tremble and be in anguish because of you. From the desert of Kedemoth, I send messengers to Sihon king of Heshbon, offering peace and saying, Let us pass through your country. We will stay on the main road. We will not turn aside to the right or to the left. Sell us food to eat and water to drink for their price in silver. Only let us pass through on foot, as the descendants of Esau who live in Seir and the Moabites who live in Ar did for us, until we cross the Jordan into the land the Lord our God is giving us. But Sihon king of Heshbon refused to let us pass through, for the Lord your God had made his spirit stubborn and his heart obstinate in order to give him into your hands as he has now done. 
the Lord said to me, See, I have begun to deliver Sihon and his country over to you. Now begin to conquer and possess his land. When Sihon and all his army came out to meet us in battle at Jehaz, the Lord our God delivered him over to us, and we struck him down together with his sons and his whole army. At that time we took all his towns and completely destroyed them, men, women, and children. We left no survivors. But the livestock and the plunder from the towns we had captured we carried off for ourselves. From Aroa on the rim of the Arnon Gorge, and from the town in the gorge even as far as Gilead, not one town was too strong for us. The Lord our God gave us all of them. But in accordance with the command of the Lord our God, you did not encroach on any of the land of the Amorites, neither the land along the course of the Jabbok, nor that around the towns in the hills. Psalm 61 Hear my cry, O God. Listen to my prayer. From the ends of the earth I call to you. I call as my heart grows faint. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I, for you have been my refuge, a strong tower against the foe. I long to dwell in your tent forever and take refuge in the shelter of your wings. For you, God, have heard my vows. You have given me the heritage of those who fear your name. Increase the days of the king's life, his years for many generations. May he be enthroned in God's presence forever. Appoint your love and faithfulness to protect him. Then I will ever sing in praise of your name and fulfill my vows day after day. Proverbs chapter 30 the sayings of Agar, son of Jacob, an inspired utterance. This man's utterance to Ithiel. I am weary, God, but I can prevail. Surely I am only a brute, not a man. I do not have human understanding. I have not learned wisdom, nor have I attained to the knowledge of the Holy One. Who has gone up to heaven and come down? Whose hands have gathered up the wind? Who has wrapped up the waters in a cloak? Who has established all the ends of the earth? What is his name? And what is the name of his son? Surely you know. Every word of God is flawless. He is a shield to those who take refuge in him. Do not add to his words, or he will rebuke you and prove you a liar. Two things I ask of you, Lord. Do not refuse me before I die. Keep falsehood and lies far from me. Give me neither poverty nor riches, but give me only my daily bread. Otherwise I may have too much and disown you and say, Who is the Lord? Or I may become poor and steal and so dishonor the name of my God. Do not slander a servant to their master, or they will curse you and you will pay for it. There are those who curse their fathers and do not bless their mothers, those who are pure in their own eyes and yet are not cleansed of their filth, those whose eyes are ever so haughty, whose glances are so disdainful, those whose teeth are swords and whose jaws are set with knives to devour the poor from the earth and the needy from among the human race. The leech has two daughters. Give, give, they cry. There are three things that are never satisfied, four that never say enough. The grave, the barren womb, land, which is never satisfied with water, and fire, which never says enough. The eye that mocks a father, that scorns an aged mother, will be pecked out by the ravens of the valley, will be eaten by the vultures. There are three things that are too amazing for me, four that I do not understand. The way of an eagle in the sky, the way of a snake on a rock, 
the way of a ship on the high seas, and the way of a man with a young woman. This is the way of an adulterous woman. She eats and wipes her mouth and says, I've done nothing wrong. Under three things the earth trembles, under four it cannot bear up. A servant who becomes king, a godless fool who gets plenty to eat, a contemptible woman who gets married, and a servant who displaces her mistress. Four things on earth are small, yet they are extremely wise. Ants are creatures of little strength, yet they store up their food in the summer. Hyraxes are creatures of little power, yet they make their home in the crags. Locusts have no king, yet they advance together in ranks. A lizard can be caught with the hand, yet it is found in king's palaces. There are three things that are stately in their stride, four that move with stately bearing. A lion, mighty among beasts, who retreats before nothing. A strutting cock, a he-goat, and a king, secure against revolt. If you play the fool and exalt yourself, or if you plan evil, clap your hand over your mouth. For as churning cream produces butter, and as twisting the nose produces blood, so stirring up anger produces strife.